Sure, everything seems to be falling apart at the moment as we know it. Things are gonna get worse before they get better. But hey, let's all just stay in, do our bit, and watch football therapy. <laughs> What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host Jan. I do hope you are all doing well, as well as you can be doing in the circumstances, staying isolated and keeping yourself occupied, reading a book, watching Netflix, doing home workouts, cleaning your apartment or house from every single square inch and then doing it again. All that kind of fun stuff. So yeah, welcome back, welcome to today's video and I'm gonna be talking about centre backs predominantly and a little bit of Philippe Coutinho and Alex Tellez. Chelsea are a really peculiar club at the moment. Well, a lot of peculiar stuff's going on at the moment. But Chelsea are in a sort of unique situation where they've got good centre-backs, but they don't have a good centre-back. And it's not like all their centre-backs are over the hill. They're all like up and coming and promising, and they all want to play. And you can make an argument for every single centre-back playing, yet yeah, probably one, hell, maybe even two will get dropped or sold. What's going to happen? What's Frank Lampard thinking behind the scenes? He said so much positive stuff about each player, which I'm going to go through. So where does that leave us when we're being linked with so many players? And apparently the deal with Gabriel, uh, with Lille, is apparently across the line. I mean, provided the player actually wants to come to Chelsea. And sort of like provided football does eventually start up again at some point. Anyway, I'm going to be talking about all that kind of stuff today, but a quick reminder to subscribe if you haven't done so to Football Therapy. Why not upload every day Chelsea content? You might like that, right? Like the video to help me out as well. Follow me on Instagram at Football Yannick. All right, let's get on with it. You know what? Let's start with this tweet. Ding. Nicolo Shira. I've actually cited this dude before. Apparently Apparently, a very reputable and respected journalist who actually talked about Chelsea or having already opened up talks and doing business with Porto regarding Alex Tellez, the left back who apparently Chelsea are probably going to sign. Porto still want the 40 million, which is reportedly the um, buyout clause. He's only going to have 12 months left in his contract. Chelsea are like, who are you, Porto, to demand the full buyout clause when he's just got 12 months left on his contract? You're Porto. You're not Barcelona. Shut up. I mean, I don't think Chelsea's saying that, but it could be something like that. And apparently the Coutinho links are strong in this one. Bit of Yoda for you there. I'm not going to spend loads of time talking about Philippe Coutinho. I've actually done a video on him. I'm going to put it in a card above me now. Now, I might do, I might forget in post-production. Who knows? But there might be a card above me <laughs> linking you to the video I've done on Coutinho. I'm spending too much time talking about this. Moving on. So it's good to know Chelsea are doing bits behind the scenes. But like I've recently talked about on Football Therapy, Chelsea have been very, very heavily linked to the point of a deal apparently being agreed with Lille for the centre-back Gabriel, and Chelsea have been heavily linked as well with him. Titi, I did a video on him yesterday of Barcelona, World Cup winner, good centre-back, always injured, always broken. So apparently Chelsea are very much in the market for a centre-half, central defender, centre-back, whatever you like to call them. So let's talk about this. Before all of this craziness happened, I just, people speculated about a world-class centre-back, right? Like, Chelsea don't need centre-backs, Chelsea don't need midfielders, Chelsea don't need centre-backs, they need a left-back, they need maybe another winger, they need a striker, and then maybe they'll need a goalkeeper, depending on what's going on with Kepa. Obviously, there's been a lot of news stories linking Chelsea to other goalkeepers as well. So people were thinking, nah, they don't need a centre-back, but... If they were to bring in a centre-back, it would be like a Virgil van Dijk, a Koulibaly, one of these strikers that come in, slot straight in and supercharge the defence because they're just elite and, you know, experienced and seasoned and not Gabriel from Lille. You kind of see where I'm going here. Fair enough though, Frank Lampard, who apparently is connected with transfers at Chelsea Football Club, he's obviously saying, you know what guys, I actually think we should get another centre-back at this point. And I'm going to tell you why I think this is strange. Well, okay, it's obviously not strange. Chelsea have defensive problems. Uh, go, get a new defender. Simple, right? Fine. And maybe we'll put this down, this next part down, to Frank Lampard's managerial inexperience because prior, he fought well, not necessarily four, but he bigged up every single one of his Chelsea defenders in different ways. Now, I know it's a good manager's inclination 
to big up all of his players, unless of course you're Jose Mourinho living in the Stone Ages, throwing all your players under the bus at different times. So I get it, we're gonna go through all the four centre backs and talk about what Lampard sort of said regarding them and how maybe I feel, we feel maybe about the defenders. First up, Fikayo Tomori, young centre back, Chelsea bright star, was with Frank Lampard at Derby last season and you know what, he won player of the season over your Mason Mounts, over your Harry Wilsons. It was for Kaio Tomori who won player of the season. A young, lonely centre back, bright star. Frank Lampard took him with me, like yes thank you very much. That enough speaks for itself, Chelsea Academy graduate scored the wonder goal, was playing in defence against Ajax away where they had a defensive masterclass 1-0 away win in the Champions League. For Kaio Tomori, Chelsea's future, fine, they're going to sell him, I mean I don't even think they'll loan him, or will they? You decide. So Frank Lampard's obviously bigged up Tomori loads, he had him last season, he looks really good right, cool. Next up, Kurt Zuma. Now, you can put this next part down to the transfer ban, but in this summer, as Frank Lampard arrived, got his knees under the desk and started talking, he was like, I want Zuma. Zuma, of course, enjoyed a really positive loan spell at Everton and wanted to stay. Everton loved him, Ancelotti was coming. Well, I don't know if Ancelotti was coming at that point, but you know what I mean. They loved him, he loved Everton, he was playing really well there, and Frank Lampard saw a very good centre back. He's seeing Harry Maguire going for 85 million, and he's probably thinking, Kurt Zuma's going to be worth 50 million then, the way he's playing in the Premier League at the upper echelons. I want Zuma. He was saying in press conferences, he's my player, I want him, I want to play him, I don't want him to be sold to Everton, because Zuma was pushing for an Everton sale to make his loan permanent. Lampard was having none of it, he fought for him massively. And that, I don't want to say it backfired, but he might be thinking differently after watching some of his performances. But then again, Zuma's had some excellent performances. For you guys about to roast me in the comments, I know Zuma's talented. He's for skillful on the ball, he can have good defensive games. So I don't know. I don't know, I'm just displaying the information to you guys here. So that's Zuma. Next up, let's talk about Andreas Christensen, another sort of academy player, came in a little bit later. Went on loan to Borussia Mönchengladbach, played centre-back, played midfield, played very well. Chelsea wanted him back, they got him back. He played for Conte, he played in the middle in the David Luiz role many times. He um, played well for Chelsea quite a lot. I think Conte cooked him a little bit when he made that Barcelona mistake. He just kept playing him rather than taking him out of the sort of firing line. But he's a very talented defender and actually towards these latter stages of Chelsea's season before the whole season halted, Christensen was probably Chelsea's best defender when he was playing with the mask that he got from Milan. I, I just, you know, and again, before I probably would have been like, yeah, Christensen's the one to go. And now I'm like, dude, Christensen's been the best recently. I know he's really, really highly rated, but he's been the best. And of course, there's Antonio Rudiger. Now, everyone was saying, oh yeah, well, Rudiger's Chelsea's best defender. You know, he was good last season. He's, a, he's the most seasoned. He's the oldest, like around 26 years old or something, maybe 26, 27. He's their best defender. Oh, well, Chelsea will be all right when, you know, Rudiger comes back because he's the best defender. He's, he will sort out all the defensive problems. You know, this was like the sort of narrative of Chelsea's earlier stages of the season. Rudiger came in. Rudiger's the one, man. Rudiger. Even like uh, Frank Lampard many, many times said, oh, you know, when Tony Rudiger comes back, he's a big player for us. He's a big player for us. All kind of insinuating that he's the one. It's Rudiger plus one. It's the seasoned defender plus one. But Rudiger's had some absolute stinkers as well and it's made it very, very difficult. So where does this leave us? Well, each defender you can make a case for why they were the one. And all, every single one of these four defenders have had like really poor games. Now, really, really poor games. Do you put this down to a lack of collective chemistry at the back of the pitch or indeed the whole team? Or are they just not that good? Chelsea are going to look to buy someone, so who do they replace? And also, and also think about this, I personally rate Ethan Ampadu incredibly highly. I do, I do, I rate him so, so highly. More like, you know, probably more high than Mark Gurhey and all these other Chelsea centre-back wonder kids knocking about. I think Ethan Ampadu is the real deal. What happens to him? I don't think he goes into midfield. I think Chelsea are flush for midfielders forever ever whether it's dm or attacking midfield number eights number tens he's not going to get into chelsea's midfield so maybe he should be a center back 
So where does that leave us? So this is where I'm going to pass it on to you guys. I want to get your thoughts and opinions down in the comment section of what's going to happen. Who do you think is the weak link in Chelsea's current centre-back group? <laughs> and who do you think should come in? Do you think Ampadu should come in? Do you think it's going to be like Gabriel and Rudiger? Do you think Ampadu will eventually get into the centre-back system? Do you think he'll play midfield? Who is Chelsea going to sell? Who is Chelsea going to loan? Who is going to be the first choice centre-back partnership? Who's going to be the second choice? Get down in the comment section below and let me know that. And if you have enjoyed this content today, guys, I'd urge you guys to like the video. It helps me out a lot. And remember to subscribe to Football Therapy. If you are indeed new to the channel, come follow me on the social medias at Football Yannick on both Twitter and Instagram. You lot enjoy the football that's not happening. Watch some old matches or something. And I'll see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living, I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines, I rap through thought. Body bag the verse, outline the chuck. In my life, seen trouble, hustle on the double. Silence on the trigger, like my pick got a muzzle. Yo, chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble. I only love this paper, sorry I don't. I love me, baby.